What is up, Hardcore Nation? It's Hardcore Christopher here. And today, I'm going to be telling you a story from my childhood. Okay. So where to begin with this story? And, uh, before I go any further, I will say, fair warning, there will be a, there will be a cuss word in this video, so, uh, So, let's see, this was back when me and my family were living in a Joplin trailer park, and I actually don't, I actually don't remember what day it was what what day it was I know that the next day was a school day and I was an eagle still gonna say it Joplin Eagles suck um from my personal experience at Joplin schools um So, I was sleeping in the living room on the couch like I usually did. Because for some odd reason, I didn't want to sleep in my room. I guess it was because the living room had a bigger TV than my bedroom did. Because I was glued to the TV. Um, so. All I remember is that it was late. And I'm sleeping. And I'm snoozing away. I'm off in dreamland. And all of a sudden. I feel like I couldn't breathe. In which I couldn't breathe. Well, I could breathe. It was just really hard. I felt I felt scared. Because I didn't know what was happening to my body. But I, I wasn't panicked. I went because to rem to explain to you guys the layout of our trailer. My mom's room was past the kitchen because at the time my parents had divorced. Divorce was finalized and everything like that. So uh, it, it, it happened, it would have either had to have happened in 2004 I'm gonna say it happened in 2004 because that's the only time frame that makes sense to me. Um, so 
So, I'm going to give you guys a picture of the layout. You had our front door, and you had our screen door. As soon as you walked into our trailer, there was a, you were square, you stepped into, into the living room. And led off, and the living room, next to the living room was the kitchen, and my mom's room was after the kitchen. But just, if you were to turn to your right, you would uh, you would end up you would be in a hallway and my grandma my granny she was Her room, which was my sister's room, they were the uh, they were the last room on the hallway. So I wake up. I go to I go to my granny, and she wakes up. She says, what's wrong? I couldn't tell her anything. And... She said, get in bed with me. So I did. She didn't know if I could have... She didn't know if I could have a breathing treatment. I didn't know at the time that I was having an asthma attack. Um, so, she, she goes into my mom's room once. And she goes... Sharon, you got a sick kid. I need you. And I guess she said she she would be up in a minute. In a minute. Well, a couple minutes goes by, and I will say I will warn you all now. Cuss word coming. In this next sentence. She goes into my mom's room the second time. She goes. She goes. Sharon, you got a sick kid. Now get your ass up out of that bed. Didn't take my mom long after the second time. Then she com she comes to she comes to me and uh my mom was looking for the breathing treatment, couldn't find the darn thing. And so I call uh I didn't call nine one one. My mom called 911 while I was in a chair 
sitting on my sitting on my granny's lap, just just throwing up. I mean, throwing up everywhere. At crew, or at least that's what that's what that's what my granny was calling it. So, my mom calls 911. Didn't take long for police, firefighter, ambulance. Um, to get to, to get to our trailer house. And... Our and while I'm while I'm hunched over, puking my guts out, the firefighter as uh, he squatted down to my level, looked up at me, and said, "Can you say your name?" Now I'm thinking, I'm throwing up, I'm tired, I've been bre I've been wheezing, I've been breathing like this for a long time, and you want me to say my name, have you lost your darn mind? And after it was determined that I couldn't say my name, I got to take a ride. I got to take a ride all the way to Freeman Hospital. I think it was Freeman Hospital. Now I will say this. I was I was coherent. I knew what was going on, and when I got into the ambulance, there was a really nice guy that said, I'm going to take your blood. So I'm just laying there, looking up at, uh, looking up at the ambulance. Not even, let's see, I would have been seven at the time, so not even really knowing what was happening to me. And I, I remember, I remember the guy saying, don't move your arm. So I have my arm out flat, and he takes, I believe he used three needles for three blood, draw, uh, three blood draws. And on the last one, I flinched my arm a bit. He goes, don't move. I go, okay. Well, I didn't say anything, but I was just... I was just thinking, man, what is going on here? I mean, my body's never acted like this. I don't know what's going on. And I, I was, I was afraid that I could die. So... We get to the hospital. I didn't know that my mom... I did not know that my mom... Uh, drove... Um, to the hospital. But... 
I could tell she was worried. Worried about her baby boy. Me? I just wanted to know what was going on with me. Not really knowing what an asthma attack was. I knew I had asthma, but I didn't know what an, what an asthma attack was. And... They take me to a room, they get an IV in me. And... They, they, they told me that you should be getting some water. Well, there was water in the IV, and they were telling me that I should be getting, like, I should be getting something from the IV, but me, being seven years old, I just, I think I just looked at the doctor like, what are you saying? And I stayed in there for three days and three nights. I experienced what, what it was like to sleep on a hospital bed. Found out that hospital beds are not comfy at all. Found out I don't like hospital food. But you know what? I learned something. I learned the importance of having loved ones. Don't get me wrong, I've all I've always known I've been loved. But it's in times like that where you don't, where you don't, where I didn't realize how much I was loved. Even though I was seven years old, even though it took my grandma two times to get my mom up. I respect my mom and I love her because... She drove to the hospital. And she stayed with me. She called. She called, the, she called the school every single day that I was in the hospital and told them that I would not be there. I had a lot of homework afterwards. But that didn't really bother me. I I remember walking every every day. I remember one night sleeping and being woke up my butt being woke up by my bladder. I made it to the bathroom. Thankfully. I went back to Joplin after my three day after my three day stay in the hospital
and I remember I had a friend named Evan at, at the time and he he looked right at me because we were sitting right across from one another He told me that he picked a great day to come back because it was a Friday when I came back and after that was the weekend. There is one thing I am forgetting about this story, and I left it out on purpose, just to go back to it. You know... I had a visitor those three days. He never missed a day. My dad came and visited me while I was in the hospital. Those three days, he sat and talked to me, talked with my mom. He stayed there up until he had to go to work. This was the story. Of my first asthma attack. I'm Hardcore Christopher. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And let's meet that 1,000 subscriber mark. Also, don't forget that at 40 subscribers, I will be doing a Q&A video. You can send your Q&A you can You can put your Q&A questions down in the comments below. Or... You can you you can send you can send them to Christopher Bo Christopher Box twenty five at gmail dot com. Don't forget to go show my uh, my friends Spooky Robocat and Tom Masters and Wrestling for Fans some love. I'm Hardcore Christopher. See you later, everyone.